Hey, Taylor, welcome to Leaders Lead Podcast. I'm super excited with this podcast. What we're doing is we're sitting down and we're talking to some amazing leaders across the country. We're learning cool things about them. We're learning where did they get their leadership style from? How did they adapt that leadership style? What are they changing? What are some things that they need to work on? I want you to tune in to listen to the Leaders Lead Podcast. Every single week, we're gonna have new content for you. We're streaming on all the major platforms, so look out for Leaders Lead Podcast. Hey, 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 what is going on? I hope everybody is having an amazing day. I am super, super, super excited. How many times can I say super in one episode? I'm super excited. I'm sitting down and I'm having a conversation with Erica Warfield on Leaders Lead the Podcast. This is my first episode in this podcast. I'm super excited, not just because it's the first podcast, but I'm excited because I'm sharing the virtual stage with Erica Warfield. I was uh, scrolling through LinkedIn one day and I just got captivated with, <laughs> with, with Erica's content. Erica is on fire. We got to talking and I'm, I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, I, I want to have this conversation with you. I think you, you're amazing. I'm seeing some amazing stuff in there. I, you know, I, got, I got the leadership podcast. I got the other Tony Taylor inspires podcast. What, what are you thinking? I'm thinking leadership. And she's like, I'm thinking leadership too. Right. So that's how we are roll. Right. We're all about uh, leadership. And that's why we're here on leaders lead the podcast. So Miss Erica, how are you doing today? I am good. If you saw me looking down and just smiling, I was trying to get the link from this live podcast into our post to let everybody know we're live. Hey, that's, um, you, that's you leading. I love it. Yeah. That's you leading. <laughs> that is you leading. <laughs> you trying hard to multitask and not lose it. Um, yeah, yeah. I am doing very well and I am super excited to be a part of this inaugural podcast. So thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on. I, um, The first time I saw you, speaking of origins, was in Derek Mildred's uh, Global Influencer Summit. And you had such an on fire passion for everything that you were talking about with Derek. And that just, it lit a fire and it, it just, it sparked a song in my heart, not to be too cheesy, but you know, some people talk the talk and it was obvious you walk it. And yeah. it was just, I was like, bowled over when you reached out and said, we need to have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how I wrote it? That sounds like somebody's in trouble. <laughs> no, no, I love, I love doing um, Derek's Influencer Summit. And I know that a lot of people were, uh, were thinking that I was going to talk about it, it, strategies on how to, to gain followers. Right. And I just right. looked at it as, you know, how, how can I show people how to connect? How can I talk about connecting, right? How can I talk about connecting? I know that's one of your favorite words too, because I think we, we follow, we have the same uh, mentor um, in, in John Maxwell, because I know I mean, when you and I were talking, uh, you you start quoting some of his stuff and I'm like, wait, 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 that's that's my favorite quote right there. And I, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my, that's my favorite quote, but that's one thing that I think about um, when I'm on when I'm on social media, I think about you know how can I connect with people, and as far as uh, connecting, what is c connecting? I feel like people need to to know who you are, right? They need to know who you are. They need to know that they can trust you. I know who you are. Uh, I know I can trust you. I love you. I think that you are on fire. I think that you are amazing. But I want to ask you um, a, a different question on most leadership podcasts, people, they'll say, you know, who are you? And then, you know, people, they'll start rattling it out and they'll say, well, I'm, I'm so-and-so this, I'm the, the vice president, CEO of this. I mean, you are the CEO, <laughs> right? You are the CEO, you are the person that's in charge. But what I want to ask you to, to kick this thing off, and then we'll get to some of the comments because it looked like we got some comments coming in. But 
who who is who is Erica? You know, I think first and foremost, I am a passionate follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. So to him be, I mean, to God be all the glory. Um, I was just looking at your last post of when you found the Lord at 18 and I got the tingles because I remember when that happened for me. Um, so anything that I think that happens in my business, at, at least for me, you know, it's not about me. It, it's not about what it is that I do necessarily except that the gifts that have been given to me or if I'm led to read certain materials of major thought leaders. Mm. Um, outside of that, if I had to give my one minute, my one minute elevator pitch, I would say I get more recurring revenue for B2B C-suite executives and founders and solopreneurs by shortening their sales cycles out of their sales teams. Um, so I do that using what I call the forgotten trifecta of strategic growth. I can get into that more later on. That's the secret. Um, right? That's it's, the it's, secret. Kind of, it's the secret sauce. It really is. But you really can source B2B C-suites for your own business and get the decision makers. And that's how you shorten the sales cycle. So that's just kind of what I do. Um, but it's not necessarily who I am. So that was like, that was a loaded question you asked. I know. It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> They're always loaded. They are always loaded. Um, let's see. We're gonna hit some some comments in here. Hello, Erica Warfield from Jordan Mendoza. What's going on, Jordan? Jordan Mendoza. And now I'm gonna see if I can see the comments. Oh, there they are. I can I can see them kind of. Sometimes uh, I don't yeah. get the Facebook ones. Got some cool shades. Yes. We, we got we got my brother, Haram. Yep, yep. Oh, I, More I, to come. I don't know if I've ever met. Is it Haram or Hiram? Yeah. Har Haram. Haram. Well, it's and, very and nice to meet correct you. Correct me if I if I messed that up, Haram. I know he'll let me know. Uh, I know he'll let me know if I screwed that up in the comments. <laughs> that is that is my brother. Um, so um, leadership, right? On on the subject of of, of leadership, uh -huh. do you consider yourself uh, to be a leader? I, I can, yes, it is. <laughs> I consider myself the, the long and short of it. I consider myself to be a steward. Um, I, I think there are a lot of people that need to be careful with the word leader. Um, I was explaining this to somebody earlier today. You know, a leader, a, a servant leader. There are some people who will call themselves leaders, but really, what they are are managers. Ooh. You know, because a leader. Wait, can wait, 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 wait. There's a difference. I know, right? There's a there's a difference, and I'm gonna throw some Maxwell out there. Johnny oh, Maxwell. There's some okay. hey, there's some people that are looking at you right now, like like they're probably looking at you like you just invented fire. I wish I had that bomb drop because that was that was really powerful. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> write this down, everybody, in the comments. Say an amen. Give a heck yes if you know that leaders are sometimes just managers. Um, yeah, so a leader, you know, can actually change the direction of a ship. A manager can only keep the ship going in the same direction by steering, right? Mm. And that's the difference between a leader and a manager. So to answer your question, how do I see myself? I see myself as a steward and as a servant leader. Um, and I think what we were talking about a little bit in my background, back in the day, I, I sort of had this experience with 9-11 where I had literally, you know, just moved I left my law firm job in Washington, D.C., where the Pentagon had been struck. And so this was maybe a month before 9-11, and I had moved to Chicago, another very large city. Right. During 9-11, everybody started evacuating because nobody knew if Hancock or Sears was going to go down. And it was about that time that I had also, when I had moved out there for a job, um, a job offer, and I thought I was going to be starting they said, we decided not to do anything with this so you can go back to Washington, D.C. You can sue us if you want, but we'll win. Well, they said it just like that. They said it just like that. <laughs> it was cold. Wow. It was cold. Talk about no leadership. Yeah, yeah. And so there I was stuck in Chicago. They were Chicago. managing, right? Yeah, they were managing. <laughs> I was stuck in Chicago. I didn't know a soul. And that at that time, um, this would have been like in the 2000, yeah, it was 9-11, it was 2001. Um, I 
started investigating and I ended up with this wonderful company called Mary Kay Inc. And that is the very first time I got a solid understanding of leadership. Mm -hmm. was what that company practiced in, in, in terms of servant leadership yeah. um, and, and stewardship and praising people to success. And that was something I wasn't seeing in my law firm. My law firm was run by a CEO who had been ex-military. Mm -hmm. So for him, leadership was very much top down triangle. Whereas in servant leadership and being a steward, you view leadership as an inverted triangle and you the leader at the bottom and your job is to grow people with the hopes of one day they will surpass you hmm. Music versus to my ears. keeping them down. And so when I was with Mary Kay, because of that leadership model, which is so threatening to other, other companies in some respects, they'll pay lip service to it, but you don't actually see them do it. Right. You don't see a CTO wanting the director of IT surpassing them. You don't. No, <laughs> They're you don't. not going to give don't. them the keys to do that. Um, so within a year and a half, well, within six months, I was breaking records and within a year and a half, I became top 2% internationally within the company, breaking sales records and leadership and recruiting. And it really, if it wasn't for Mary Kay, I don't think I would know half of a fraction of what I know about business now, as well as leadership. Wow. Yeah. And and I, I know when when we kind of were, were doing our discovery call, I sound like a lawyer discovery call, but when we were getting to know a little bit uh, about each other, you had mentioned Mary Kay and what working for the company had done to your leadership and kind of the things that you had had learned from working with them. I was amazed. I would have never knew about their leadership. I would have never knew that they're actually leaders that lead. I look on their website and. I'm looking at the, the CEO, I'm looking at vice presidents and in their bios, they're talking about serving, they're talking about the people. It's not, well, I went to Harvard, I went here or I mm -hmm. went there. It's talking about the people. And I'm just, I was just blown, blown mm -hmm. away. And uh, one thing that you had mentioned before was you actually got leadership training, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We did. We were all taught, you know, to it's a lot of what we hear on the LinkedIn platform. Here we are, you know, 20, 40, 50 years later since the start of that company. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's really about that you give to give to give to give to give. And when you give others rise. I mean, that was the whole premise of the company. You're not going to get ahead unless you help as many people as possible. Get their dreams. Yes. Yes. Period. And and my goal was, I hope you surpass me. I'm going to help you get there. And and that was all of our goal if we were in leadership yeah. Um, yeah. was to help these women and men. You know, and that was the other thing about being in Mary Kay when I was in Chicago. You know, we we were breaking a lot of um, stereotypes being in downtown Chicago. Uh, anytime we came to Dallas for any kind of seminar or training, people within Mary Kay in other places in the country would look at us and go, that's the Chicago group, you know, because the mm, Chicago okay. group. You we just were, had a different walk about you, right? Uh, yeah. No, I don't want to say swag. It's just uh, my colleagues, we were all professional businesswomen. I would, I, my colleagues were Harvard trained attorneys that were leaving their law firms. Mm -hmm. um, we had several attorneys, we had several former CEOs, we had several VPs, we had, you name it, we had it. And these were, they were all leaving to start working with Mary Kay. Wow. Um, and so we just approached everything differently. And our, our thought process, having been in a, a leadership environment that was this, and then being groomed for success, in Mary Kay, where the leadership model was this, with servant leadership, we all just flourished. So much so that I had men in my unit that I was training. And you'd be surprised. And some of them just wanted to focus on sales rather than recruitment. Um, and they did very, very well, because for some reason, women would listen to men about their own skincare, but not other women. 
That's interesting. I, wow. Are you serious? That's pretty I'm cool. I'm serious. I can tell you. <laughs> that, is, that is really cool. I, but I hmm. learned more in six weeks um, when I first started with Mary Kay than I did in my bachelor's and master's degree. Now, granted, my bachelor's and master's are in music, but I had minors in business. I still learn more in six weeks with Mary Kay from a business and a leadership standpoint than I ever did in my academic career. That is amazing. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've, you, you took me down this deep, dark rabbit hole of Mary Kay that I'm just like, yeah, I would love to to do some work with Mary Kay. They really believe in, in, in leadership. And one thing that you said that kind of struck me <clears throat> was how you, you got your job and everybody was is, is kind of like scratching, like trying to get to the top. And mm -hmm. I started thinking about uh, when I got like my first like real job out of the military and like people would be kind of like offended by my presence. They would think that, you know, I'm trying to take their job. And my first boss, he's just like, yeah, like we think that you're gunning for my position. And I'm just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And I'm just like, you damn right. I'm gunning for your position. <laughs> and not only am I gunning for your position, but the person that I just hired or the person that I'm getting ready to hire, right? I want them to be gunning for my position because that's exactly. the way we're doing, not gunning for it to like shoot you down and kill it, but gunning for it to where, you know, you want to get promoted. And that's to, to me. And that's kind of like the way my brain works. If I'm in an organization, I want to thrive and the way that we thrive is we give to other people. So I'm not going to sit in this seat I'm not going to sit in this seat for forever and be a dinosaur while I got the, the the young guns, you know, while I'm holding them down, like underneath me. Let's get to some some questions because I can go on and on and right. on about that. So we got a question from Gary F. How does being a Christian on LinkedIn affect your business? Is it positive or negative? Oh, I love that question. Keep the questions rolling. I that love that. That is a good question. Um, I, I have not noticed any ill effect. Now, I like if you were to go to my profile, I, I don't know if you would necessarily you'd be able to tell unless you were reading between the lines, mm. you know, um, because I'm not. I'm a steward, but I'm I'm not like a pastor per se. You're, so, show, you're showing us instead of telling us. Right, I can, I can right. see it all over you. I can tell that you're a believer. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I haven't noticed affect me negatively at all. But at the same time, I've never heard anybody say, I'm signing with you because you're a believer. You know, um, when I'm responding to a post that may have uh, a, a spiritual bent, and my response is appropriate, then then I will discuss. Like in Tony's post where he was sharing, you know, his his origin story of when he became a believer, then it's appropriate for me to share. But if it's a post about something that has nothing to do with that, I, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily gonna go there yeah. to witness or evangelize uh, because I believe in attracting people to the message and not repelling people from oh. the message. I love that. I love that. You're dropping bombs, Erica. <laughs> you know what's funny about that post? Um, when you mentioned it, I uh, I was thinking to myself, I didn't share that that I had got baptized in that post. But before I left and I went to boot camp, because that's what I was talking about. Before I left and yeah. I went to boot camp, I, I I did get baptized. So it's funny that you say that because there again, there's that, you know, show when in, in, instead of telling. Yeah I, yeah, I didn't say that. That's funny that, that you picked up on that. Uh, we got another question. Leadership means being a part of a team and doing what it takes in order to continue to grow and to succeed, sometimes helping to fill the gaps where needed. Has there ever been a time um, in your career where, um, and I wasn't, I wasn't good at this at first, when I first stepped into leadership, but where you needed to fill a gap that didn't necessarily like belong to you, kind of like in your your uh, your area that you usually were responsible for. Oh, definitely. Well, even even oh, when I first started in corporate, when I first 
made the pivot from academia. I left a PhD program and I went into the law firm. And uh, I think it was maybe within a year and a half, I was already in middle management mm. as, as a recruiting manager. And I was working really long hours. Uh, I remember giving a talk on servant leadership, um, which the rest of the administrative staff loved. Don't think the CEO loved it so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I can remember when we lost the benefits manager. Managers um, hate seeing their blind spots. That's the difference between a manager and a leader. Well, and I never specifically pointed him out, but um, I was just speaking on it as a concept. And, um, you know, that was when it was first getting really, really big, you know, uh, at that point in time. But I can remember we lost our benefits manager. And uh, because I got promoted, I had no HR assistant. And so I was literally doing three jobs. Wow. And, and you just, you know, in that kind of environment, you do what you do. And um, I can remember having a really hard time walking my walk because I was literally not getting sleep. I was getting adrenal fatigue. I can remember people telling me you shouldn't be working so hard. Oh, but here I need this by. Of course. <laughs> of course. Take, take some take some take some time off you need to take some time off okay i'll give you the day off but but i'm, I'm gonna bombard you with emails the whole time and that's all part of being a leader i i i think is is taking care of yourself and i think a lot of leaders even the good the best leaders sometimes that's where they fall is that you know they're not taking care of, of their self mm -hmm. See, not only giving purpose, direction, and motivation, but training while you assist them in doing the tasks. I love them. Mm -hmm. Do you follow or do I sound off? No, I think that's true. I, I, I mm. think you can't just say uh, verbally, this is how it's done. You show by example. And I think a lot of leaders also, if they don't understand servant leadership or they don't understand being a steward, uh, I don't think they get the concept of the burden of comprehension is on the part of the speaker. Ooh. It, the burden of comprehension is not on the listener. It is on the speaker. And if I, the speaker, need to explain it eight or nine or ten different ways and show it eight or nine or ten different times before somebody understands that, then that is part of being a leader, too. Yeah. Because there, there's all sorts of different filters that the listener could have. Yeah, no, I love that. We're getting some. We're getting some good questions. We are getting some good questions. We really are. I yeah. so appreciate you, Gary and Stephen and Robert and and Jordan, if you're still with us. Oh yeah, I I think your Christian faith goes hand in hand uh, with ethics. I, yes. I think anything you believe goes with with how you move with with how you operate. What, what do you think about that? Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, somebody's belief system, depending on, you know. Now, I, I'm sure that there are, are, there are some very lovely atheists. You know, I don't <laughs> want to say because you don't have a faith-based system that like you're not you going that. to believe ethically, right? Mm -hmm. I think, I think if, if you understand that you are a steward in any way, whatever that is, that you are going to behave in a way that is morally and ethically sound. And you are going to do what you can to give to others and to support, uh, regardless of what, of what your faith is. Yeah. And, and not having faith is still, is still its own form of faith. Ooh, it's just not good. called that. That's good. Does that make sense? No, that makes that that makes that makes a lot of sense. I know you were talking about we were talking a little bit about um, you know the difference between a leader and a manager. Have you ever been in a situation to where uh, you you've worked for a manager and, and what was that like? I yes, and you know that goes back to. Um, I'm glad we get to revisit this. Something that you were saying <laughs> earlier about people being worried about, you know, somebody gunning for their position or whatever, you know, some people think very, very strange thoughts. And it's typically those who are managers <laughs> sitting in a position where their title is general manager or director or C-suite or, but they're, the mindset is of a manager. And yes, I have. Um, and I, I, 
I can say that some of my best experiences with leaders are with women. Mm -hmm. I can also say a couple of my worst experiences were with women. Okay. Okay. You know, because of that, that threatening, um, that threatening aspect that comes with it. And so, yes, it, it is very difficult when you work with somebody like that. And so going back to what you're saying, I was thinking of the 48 laws of power. The author escapes me, but any of you watching, I highly recommend that book. Um, this gentleman wrote it because he was working in Hollywood as like a script writer. So he saw all <laughs> the cloak and dagger that goes on with mm -hmm. Hollywood, you know, and he started analyzing like 3000 years of history of what are the 48 laws of power and how do courtiers act in the court and, and how are we seeing that play out in corporate America and how are we seeing that play out in Hollywood? And so these 48 laws, but one of them, and this goes along with John Maxwell, has to do with the real leader is not the person with the highest rank or title, the real leader is the person with influence. Ooh. Now, according yeah. to the 48 laws of power, you better not. <laughs> Stick your head above the parapet if you're that person. You've got to play the game. You know, uh, if it's if it's nothing else than knowing that the game exists and then operating ethically within the game. Oh, I love that. I love that. That um, and the author of that that escapes me too. I'll probably find it later and put it in the comments. But no, I'm going to look um, it up right now. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, John Maxwell referenced that in the book everyone communicates and but few connects I actually was listening to the audiobook this morning and, mm -hmm. and heard that so <laughs> that's interesting that that you brought that up and and, and was, i believe in that i believe in that dearly yeah. it was robert green robert green so in all of these things that we're talking about robert green wrote um, with an e on the end robert green e. <laughs> wrote uh the 48 laws of power and the first person to talk about servant leadership, or at least articulate it as a principle. So Mary Kay started her business in 1963, right? And so she was already yeah. operating under stewardship. And that that's an interesting story, which I'll get wow. back to. But then Robert K. Greenleaf, who had worked with AT&T for 38 years, and he was one of the first to hire and promote women and non non-white people into positions of um, executive leadership or management, non-menial positions. He was one of the first to do that. And so he was the first to articulate and write about the concept of servant leadership. And he actually has a center named after him, the Center for Servant Leadership. And wow. that is Robert K. Greenleaf, not to be confused with Robert Green. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's fascinating. Erica, you rock. That was, that was a comment from uh, Robert. Oh, <laughs> as a servant leader, do you think that you are always learning new ways of leading? I, I Ooh, think I, love that. I think one becomes dead mentally and, and emotionally when they stop learning. Yes. Frankly. Yes. Yes, I in, love in that. anything. I don't. I don't. I. I hope I never get to the point where I think I have it all figured out because I know I don't have it all figured out. Not in leadership. Not in anything. Yeah. No, that's good. I was. Yeah, and that's what. That's. That, I'm glad that he asked that question because I was going to ask you. You know, as leaders, and that's one thing that I've strive to be is is to be a, a good leader, a good mm. follower, a, a good steward, a good father, a good husband, a good friend. A good now a good podcaster. Um, I learn. I, I I've learned that I have to continue to learn. I can't go on the same information that I had yesterday into tomorrow. It just won't mm -hmm. work. I have to pick up something in order to keep going. Otherwise, I, I, I'll be dead. I'll be dead mentally. Like they say, there's some people they die at the age of 18, but they're buried at the age of 71. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I don't want to be like that. And so that's what I was going to ask you. Um, what are you working on uh, to, to make yourself a, a better person and a better leader? Because, you know, it goes hand in hand. Um, well, I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of reading. 
I, and not, I don't not read, reading like me. I read audiobooks. How, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I actually read the, the hard with the paper and the oh, and man. I'm the geek that's taking the ruler and the pencil. <laughs> I love that. I love well, that. And I have to because I mean, even when I was back working on a PhD, I I needed I needed every one of my senses to be able to retain. Yeah. Otherwise, I would forget it the next day. It didn't come naturally for me. Mm. So um, I do a lot of reading. Um, I do believe for me, I do believe in, um, you know, going to church and in fellowship. I have not been able to do that a lot as of late. And especially during lockdown, it became, okay, now we've got to do this virtually. Yeah. You know, so I, I do, I do a lot of reading, whether that's business books, whether that's investment books, whether that's um, spiritual books, Bible, whether that's, um, what is one of the ones that I've, one of the ones that I think is super fascinating right now is the creature. I just lost it. I just forgot it. It's, I bet it's on my <laughs> shelf and I'm going to sit here and find it because I want to know what it is. There it is. Okay. It's the creature from Jekyll Island. And it Ooh. is the whole history of the Federal Reserve System, which is not really a banking system. It is a cartel. Really? Uh, yeah. Really? It is, and this it a, is, is it fascinating. Is, is nonfiction? Oh, it's totally nonfiction. It literally goes over the history of how the Federal Reserve System was started in our country. And it was literally started by six men who held one fourth of the world's wealth. Wow. And it was started to benefit them. Really? Mm hmm. I mean, so you if know. you look at, yeah. It, yeah, if you look at, you know, every bank bailout, every um, large corporate bailout we've had, like in 2008, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you look at what's going on now, they are, the Federal Reserve always says, or the large organization always says, we have to bail them out. They're too big to fail. Right. But, but right. who pays for that? The taxpayer pays for that. We do. We do. As much yeah. like leadership, as much like leadership, when you have, or, or just like a company, right? When mm -hmm. you have leaders at the top, right? Because th they're in that non everted pyramid th that we talked about. You have leaders at the top and they take, 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 take. Yes. You got, you got the, the employees, right? That they put at the bottom that have to do the, the work to make up for that deficit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the creature from Jekyll Island is a huge, I, it's a massive tome too, but it's a huge eye opener. That is the antithesis of stewardship and servant leadership is what is going on with our federal reserve system. Mm, that's, a, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, I got a couple more questions because I know you are a busy lady. Um, again, this is, this is really good. This is fun. I'm like learning. I've, I've wrote some stuff down over here. This is some good stuff. And for the listeners, everything that we've talked about, the books that Erica's talked about, the books that I've bought up, I'll make sure that we leave them uh, in, in the comment section so that you all can go and, and look it up. I'm writing them down so that I can start listening to them. I haven't got to where Erica's at. I love listening to audiobooks. So, uh, so we'll make sure that we drop that stuff in the comments. I was going to ask you, um, being a, a leader, Right. And I keep talking about that. It's kind of hard not to because I keep seeing it flashing up there. Right. Leadership, leaders, lead, leaders, lead. Um, have, when when was that moment where you realized, like, man, I think I got it. I think I got this. I think I got. I've arrived to the point of where I know and I understand that in order to lead, I must serve. Well, it started for me with the Mary Kay organization, uh, where I got, oh gosh, where I really got to see this play out. So, it, you know, and I, I really want to drive this home because it's going to be so easy for people to say, well, that worked because it was a, it was a company built by a woman for women in 1963, mm -hmm. right? I, if anybody knows the story of Mary Kay. Which Ash, is historic. Yeah. yeah. Mary Kay Ash was a fuller brush salesperson who kept getting passed over for promotions, even though she was the top salesperson, she was the top leader, she was the top trainer. And she would have to train people, typically men, to then be promoted above her. And so she finally got fed up and they were getting paid more than her. And she, instead of complaining about it, she just said, I'm gonna start a company. 
Now in 1963, this was going into this area of um, like second wave feminism, which is fine, that's done a lot too. But instead of complaining, she just said, I'm going to start up a company. I'm not gonna burn my bra, I'm going to start up a company. And so that's what she did <laughs> based on stewardship <laughs> and servant leadership principles. And she inverted the, you know, she inverted the leadership model. Um, and, and from that, you know, of course it resonated with women and everybody thinks of Susie Homemaker and it's okay to be Susie Homemaker and want to have a side hustle, yeah. you know, but now we move into present day. And so anybody who's listening, I don't want you to think, well, that just resonates for women because I took those same principles when I worked for BMW. And I remember when I first got there, I started out with one department reporting to me and it was the service department and it was all men including the service director and the service manager. And thank God they supported me and a couple of women. And unfortunately the women thought they had to act like the men to get ahead. And so I said, well, let me look at what their leadership model is here. And it was this. Right. And so I went in and I inverted it and that. Did grew. you get any resistance when, when you started to change the culture? Well, I showed up in my tea gloves and my vintage dresses, and I was going to be as feminine as possible. And I probably looked like a mini Mary Kay running around. And, <laughs> you know, I got made fun of at first, but then they started getting results. And they went from ninth in the region to second in the region. Wow. And they were crushing it. They, they, they totally resonated with the servant leadership model. So much so that, you know, they were like, do you... Erica, would you want to do a meeting where we could come and just listen to you talk more on this? I was like, yeah, let's do this before, you know, the shop opens. Let's do 615 every Thursday morning. You know, these guys showed up 615 in the morning. And we started with John Maxwell, 21 Laws of Leadership. And when that was and I showed them, this is how you're going to lead this. This is how you prepare. This is how we're going to cover the chapters. And when it was done, I said, who wants to do the next one? Hands went up and these guys wow. were like, let's cover, uh, let's cover Carl Sewell's, um, you know, book on customer service. Let's cover Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Let's cover, I mean, these guys were eating it up. And this was the service department. This was the service department. Wow. But out of that, now I hadn't even been there a year. I, I think in six months, they had four more departments reporting to me after that. Wow. All wow. because we were using a servant leadership model. You were given. You, you were given. Right. It was all about praising people to success and letting them know, yes, you can. And here's what you don't know about the incentive program. And here's how you work your numbers. And here's how I'm going to help you make an extra $2,000 a month. And all you got to do is be coachable. Wow. And these guys were like, I can make another $2,000 a month tell me how to do this. And so just praising them all to success, um, they were such a, they did it though. That wasn't me. They did it. They believed. They were amazing. Wow. And wow. They, they took that company from, you know, their department from ninth to second in the entire region, which was really, really hard to do when, you know, you're the flagship store. Wow. They were amazing. Wow. Wow. What do you, what, what do you, what do you attribute that to like in you? Like, like it, and, and the, the reason that I'm asking like this is because like for me, my battle, you know, see, see what I said, I said it was a battle because it was, I had to fight myself in order to, to get that concept. So did you go straight, did you go into it with the wherewithal to serve or was it something that was trained by Mary Kay? It was both. Okay. I, like I wouldn't have known to do it. This is bugging me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's it's bugging me. They keep falling in my eyes. You know what's um, bugging me? You know, it's, it's all good. What's bugging me is I got this green screen behind me and it looks like my head is like green right there. You see that when I go like that? All right. Oh, <laughs> it looks like you have platinum blonde peach fuzz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, not today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Leave it up to me to get us off a of track. But go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you know, it, it it was both. But you know, going back to the BMW group, you know, the two women were lovely. They were absolutely lovely, but they had been in a position where they 
almost had to act like men. And I think that's true in a lot of organizations for women. You know, there's this misconception that you have to subjugate your own femininity in order to get ahead when it's your femininity that will actually be the differentiator. So do you do you feel like that they, can help others and help yourself? You know, yeah. Do you feel like they felt like they needed to do that, like th that they needed to kind of like not be their authentic self in order uh, to be recognized or in order to kind of fly under the, the radar? Or do you think that that's just how they were? I think for a lot of us, including myself, because it took me a long time to get over that. Um, in fact, it took it took being a part of Mary Kay to be over that, realizing here's this group of women that want me to succeed, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just a protective shell, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying this is for all women. I'm just saying this has been my opinion Your and experience. my experience and and what I've seen. And the best female leaders that I've seen are the ones that can embrace their femininity and wow. embrace embrace their authentic self and mm. and still be that leader. You know, we always say this on the platform, you know, we give to get. And my philosophy is no. We give to 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 give. And not even thinking about more, getting. And we don't even think about getting. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, I, no, I agree. I see it a lot. And I'm just like, where is that book that everybody is reading that's telling them we give to get like get, get, get like, let's get that as soon as we can get that out of our vocabulary. I think that's when we'll really we'll really be leading. Right. I'll never forget when um, when I first stepped mm -hmm. into my first leadership role, I was in the Marine Corps and it was I would say. Friday, I got promoted. I got promoted. I was the corporal. I was in charge of, you know, all of a sudden my friends, you know, I come to work, you know, I come to work the next week, I'm in charge of them. And I'm walking different. I'm talking different. Um, you know, the stuff that I had complained about, you know, three weeks, three weeks before, right. All of a sudden I'm like, this has to get done. And they're like, why? I thought you didn't, I thought you didn't believe in that. I thought that you you know, thought that this was stupid. And I'm just like, no, it has to be done because the, the boss, I was managing, I was managing those people. And I'll mm -hmm. never forget as I'm barking orders in the bathroom, not helping these people. I'll never forget my boss, my boss. And I say my boss because not, not in the terms that you, because the boss is kind of get like a, a, a negative con connotation, but he was in charge of me. One of the greatest leaders that I ever served with he literally pulled me by my my my, my blouse, my shirt blouse, and he said, mm -hmm. "Come here." And he said, "I promoted you so that you can be you, not so you could be him, not so you could be her, not so you can be them. I promoted you so that you can be you. If that's the case, take off the rank right now. If you're going to act like everybody else, go home." And I went home and. Uh, it was, I did some soul searching. I did some serious soul searching and I came to work and I just said, Hey, you know what? These are the things that, that I don't like. You know, I didn't, I didn't tell, you know, my troops that, you know, we're going to change and I'm going to do this. I just start showing them. I just start showing them. I talked to my boss and like, you know, I don't think that it's fair that, you know, our, our platoon should have to clean, you know, all the bathrooms and have to do all of this. We should, everything should be fair and equitable. Everything should be fair and equitable. And I start living that life. And I started just like really giving, like what we talked about. I started giving, I started like my time. I started studying with these Marines. I started spending times with the, time with their family. And then I look up about a year later and we had an environment to where there were several, several of my Marines that would say, man, I would really would take a bullet for you. I really would take a bullet for you. And I would hear that. And I'm just like, wow, wow. You mean I can't force you to, you know, you mean like my way of like forcing you to, to do this and to do that? Like, no, like they literally would take a bullet from me because I'm being my authentic self because I'm loving on, on them. I'm being like who I am. Right. I'm being me. I'm giving them hugs. I'm, you know, sending them messages throughout the day. I'm thinking about you, buddy, thinking about your family. And to me, that's what 
a leader is. That's what a leader is. And that's what, like, where I feel like we get wrong a lot is that we're not doing that. We're not being um, our authentic self. And I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm glad that we're sharing uh, this space together. This is amazing. We're getting some amazing uh, comments, amazing uh, feedback. It looked like my computer is going to start breaking because of all the comments uh, that, that are that are coming in, which is really cool. I really appreciate um, everybody that's listening to this. It means so much to me. Everybody that's on LinkedIn, um, it's, no, I'm not on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and um, where else are we streaming? YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And YouTube, man. I, I really appreciate it. But um, I'm going to follow this up with um, another question. I, I always get like choked up whenever I think about this question because I think I about I'm thinking I mean, this is deep. It's no, going. No, 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 no sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I just made it weird, right? No, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's good. No, but um, what's your Thank legacy? You, what's What's your legacy? When it's all said and done, when Erica is gone, there's no more Erica. Like, what do you like want them to say? Like, if you know, if, if I'm in charge of doing the eulogy, and I, and I say, hey, I got a I got a note from Erica. Erica wanted me to deliver you this this message, and this is what she wants her le legacy to be. This is what she lived for. This is what she strived for. This is what she believed. Like deep down in her soul, deep down in her core. Wow. Yeah. And everybody who is still with us, I just want you to know, he didn't even give me a heads up as to I'm this sorry. question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, no, no. Yeah. Um, I think and the reason I, I do that, and while you collect your thoughts, and the reason that I do that, like I don't like have them like, like pre-planned. I look at it as when it, like when we're doing podcasts or when I'm on it, like doing interviews with other people, I look at his conversations. No, and, it's awesome. It's good yeah, that you're giving yeah. me a heads up because now yeah. I'm like, ooh, I gotta, I gotta look in the mirror right now in front of everyone. No, um, no. And it's all good because some people, some people, they say, they say, I want my legacy to be that I made a million dollars before I was forty. No. Some people say that, and you know that that's not me, right? Some people say they want to make a difference in the world by what they're doing. I think the last person I asked that, he said, I want to make a, a, a my, my legacy is that I love my family. I'm like, that's cool. You know? <laughs> I, I think part, there's a lot to unpack there. I think part of the legacy and, and I've, Lord knows I have failed at this more times than I can count. But I think part of my legacy, I would want to be that she loved the Lord and her actions matched up with her words, which, man, I got a long way to go. Hey. Um, I think the second would be not only that I would take a bullet for her, but she did take bullets for me. Because um, I have done that. I can think of an occasion where uh, a really irate customer, I mean, she was verbally abusive and darn near physically abusive to one of my service advisors and they didn't expect it. Everybody was stunned. I, this woman was like, she was off her meds. And I remember he was 250 pounds and six feet tall and she was just berating him in front of the customers, in front of everybody. And I stood in between them. Wow. And she was just like this in my face, very close to touching me, at which point I would have said that's assault. Yeah. But I jumped in between them um, to protect him because uh, I didn't want her touching him. And then she started screaming at me. And I, before I could think of it, I had stood up taller and I had my fists clenched at my sides, <laughs> ready. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I was ready. You, know? and I, I you just got to be ready to it. throw down. I yeah. Love it. And I remember telling some of, some of my employees, I need you to call the police right now. Do not let her in her car. Her car will be a weapon. Get her out of here. You know, call the police. Tell them there's children in the area. And um, I didn't even realize it, you, it just happens. It's not It's not like being in battle, but it just happens. And um, I remember the next day I we had a meeting 
And I told them, don't you ever be afraid to stand up for yourself. Don't you ever be afraid to tell your buddy, call the police right now. Yeah. Do not kowtow to this. this. That is unacceptable behavior. And they were all laughing and they were like, we thought you were going to punch her. <laughs> you say, I was. <laughs> I was. I was going to knock her out. I said, I wasn't going to do that because then I would have committed assault, but I was ready to defend myself. Oh, leaders lead. That is, that is the definition of, of leading. I was supposed to go. I'm like that friend that you talk to on the phone. They're like, I'm, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. But then they got a whole bunch of more stuff that they want to keep jamming in there. <laughs> but <laughs> but in terms of legacy, you know, uh, yeah. I'll just tie that up in a pretty bow that, um, I, you know, she did what she said she was going to do. Yeah. Her, her actions, her deeds matched up with her words and her faith. She attracted to the message. She didn't repel from the message um, and that she would take a bullet for us. I would want that to be my legacy above all else, I think. I love that. I think that's, and that's, that's us. That's a, the, the process of us evolving. I love how you said, I think, because that's a hard, oh my God, that, <laughs> that question is, is so powerful. And I, I think about it often. I, I, I think about it often. And that's often I ask myself that question to check everything else that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's why I started this podcast is because um, I, I love people. Right. I, I love people. Just like I was telling you, I had like my other podcast. I talked to people that I'm interested in. And I was just thinking. The thing that's affecting most people, like, what is that thing? And I, it's just like it's leadership. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing leadership, leadership, lead, leading at home, leading in your life, like on the inside, leading at work. Sometimes we're leaders while we're driving on the highway, like we're leaders, right? We're letting people over. And that's what we do in life. We lead by letting people over. We lead by letting people cut in front of us. We lead by setting that example. And that's what I want to tell you. I want to tell you, thank you for setting that example of leadership. Thank you for doing what you do. It is amazing. I really appreciate you sharing this space with me. This is an amazing uh, first podcast. We got so many different people that have showed us love. We got Steven, Robert, uh, LinkedIn user, uh, Gary. Who else we got? We got Haram. We got Jordan and, and, and many others that, that I can't see this for some reason. They won't let me see it, but this is amazing. You're amazing. Uh, where can the good folks in my network reach out to you? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're like, man, I need to go to her page. I need to get some more of her content. I need to hook up with her because that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, I, I, I need you in my business because you think the same way that I think you lead. And that's one thing that I'm all about is leading. Where can we find you? Uh, well, you can definitely find me at just Erica Warfield or Erica Warfield LLC Sales, which is my business page on LinkedIn. If it's just easier for you, you could go to my link tree, which is under Erica Warfield or even EricaWarfield.com. In fact, if you go to EricaWarfield.com, if you're struggling in your business, even as a solopreneur, I have a free gift for you there. And you can download a free PDF with a free, I think it's uh, like a, a 30 minute long video masterclass on the six keys to unlocking your best client avatar. So if you're struggling and you're like, why can't I close these deals? You might be talking to the wrong people, you know, so feel free to go to ericawarfield.com. Just scroll down, not, not even halfway, and you can access that PDF and, and get the free video that goes with it. Oh, I love that. And you are a deal, you are a deal closer. I mean, you're working with like seven figure clients, right? You know what you're doing. That just don't happen by accident. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I appreciate you for, for being on the show. You have a friend in me. If there's ever anything that I can do for you, please, please, please let me know. Uh, this has been amazing. You got anything else? No, I'm looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. Let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. See, see, we're jumping on the discovery <laughs> call because we're going to see, we're going to, I, I want to see the magic of uh, Erica Warfield. Thank you. 
And uh, you all stay tuned. I got a, a video that I want to show you before we close. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, man, I am so thankful to you, the viewer, the listener, for sticking around and listening to this leader. I learned so much. And that's why I bought this leader on the, on the show. What we're doing is we're bringing leaders on the show that are making a difference in their lives, making a difference in their homes, making a difference in their communities, making a difference in their business. So I hope that we made a difference with you today. Do me a favor. Do me a big favor. It would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment letting us know how we did. Leave us a comment, some feedback so that we can get better, so that we can keep delivering quality content. And that's what leadership is about, right? Leadership is about us growing and, and getting better as we go along the way. So this episode, hopefully is going to be better, you know, 12 episodes down the road. And I need you to help us with that. So leave us some feedback. Um, give us your ratings, whether it's a one star, whether it's a five star, we take it all and we appreciate it. So uh, thank you. And until next week, take care, my friend. Leaders lead.